Hello people of Facebook, we're live in London with Anthony Kiedis and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. My name's Simon Harper, I'm the editor of Clash Magazine and we're here to uh, premiere the video of Dark Necessities and take some questions from... Are we taking questions? Oh. Yes. Oh, I'm out of here. Sorry. End of. End of. How you doing, Simon? I'm very well, thank you. How well, are you? Nervous at all? A little bit. Okay, this me too, me too. There's about, about four people watching, I think. It's down to three. We started. We lost one already. We started with four, we're down to three. Let's try and build up again. Or at least make those three very happy. So there have been questions that have come in, been sent from your fans. Uh, let's start with Pablo from Buenos Aires in Argentina. Pablo asks, uh, it seems the getaway started a new era in the Chili Peppers' life. It feels so fresh and so on so many levels, but at the same time you keep writing about all the things you've been through, the dark, the ugly and the painful stuff. How do you manage to transform all that inner energy in so many beautiful vibes and such powerful artistic expression? First of all, A plus of a question. Very thoughtful, Pablo from Buenos Aires. Um, thank you for noticing that we worked hard on this record and that we covered some dynamics and some dimensions. Um, I guess the, the secret to the way we work has to do with chemistry and it's, it's a band effort, it's a team effort. So um, when it comes to tapping in to experience and life and joy and beauty and pain and suffering and darkness and light, um, it's something that we do collectively. If I had to do it by myself, I think I'd be a little lost, but the minute I start to hear Flea and Josh put together chords and notes and rhythms and things, it instigates ideas and it gets me in touch with life and things that I've been through, things that we've been through, just things that I imagine um, are worth writing about. And There are days when I fail miserably and I write something that's just not worth keeping and I move on to the next and every now and then you can feel it when you when you tap into a, something that's true and that's magical and real and, and means something and then you just get your poetry on and hope for the best. You mentioned uh, that you write about some of the dark and painful stuff. Are you ever hesitant about putting painful things on paper? No, no. If I'm hesitant when, when the poetry is bad, whether it's about darkness or lightness. Um, if, if it comes out feeling like it, it resonates with my heart in an honest way, then I'm, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Dario from Bologna in Italy says, I'm a huge fan, I've grown up listening to your songs, and I really appreciate the courage to evolve your music into something new and different like you have done for The Getaway. What is your favorite song from the new album? What's her name? Daria. Daria, hi Daria. My favorite song I'm hoping will change frequently. Um, when we finish the record and it was all done. My favorite song was definitely The Getaway, the song itself, um, because it did feel like an evolution for our band. It was um, something that Brian Burton had a lot to do with the creation of, um, played by my guys, made up by my guys, but directed, musically directed by Brian. And the very first time I heard that, it just touched me, like immediately. And I, I took the music and I went and sat in my car alone with the instrumental track and just started writing to it because I couldn't believe what a beautiful piece of music it was, especially the ending, the sort of climactic outro. It just, it sounded beautiful to me. And uh, for today, that's my favorite. You know, in six months down the road, I'm hoping it changes. Yeah. Jasper from the Netherlands says, how did the switch to another producer, which you just mentioned, mm -hmm. Brian is a uh, danger mouse, how did, I work, how did it work out for you guys? And in what aspect was it any different from working with Rick Rubin? Jasper from where? The Netherlands. The Netherlands. Hello, Jasper from the Netherlands. Um, well, they have similarities and they have big differences. Um, both are masters of their craft and we're lucky to work with these guys. Um, Brian was new and anytime you're doing something with somebody new, it's kind of um, invigorating and his process is very different than Rick's, but they're, um, they're both wildly in love with music all day, every day. So they, they live it, they breathe it, they talk about it. Um, they're very smart, very analytical, and Brian is a guy who likes to create in the studio, which is something we hadn't done before. So we would show up with nothing on the day, on a morning of recording, and he would just start instructing us, like, you know, put down a beat. Play, play drums for 10 minutes and I'm going to keep my favorite 30 seconds of that 10 minute performance and then we would build on that and so we built songs in the studio live which was new and exciting and 
some of that's on our record. So it's scary too, I bet. It was. There's a lot of pressure, but you know, sometimes you need that pressure to bring out weirdness that's inside of you that is uh, yet to have been discovered by your more conventional methods. Um, so I, I credit Brian for poking around inside of us and finding things that were new. Matt from New York City says, Hi Anthony, how do you come up with your lyrics? Do you draw from life experiences past and present while thinking methodically about it, or is it more of an improvisational kind of process? Um, I, I think it might be both. I, I, it is improvisational, um, but it does come from my dreams and my life and my friend's experience and my wanted experiences and sometimes I don't really know where it comes from but if I sit down and block everything else out and just listen to music and start writing hopefully my pencil knows what to do you know sometimes you come up with the melody first and the words will just fall into place sometimes you can't sleep at night and you get up and you start writing things down in the middle of the night and you realize suddenly you've got a few decent lines of poetry that reflect a a broken heart or a bad relationship or whatever and then you just build on it, it sort of gains its own momentum so there is a spiritual aspect where it doesn't necessarily seem to all be coming from me but maybe inspired by just random energy that circulates around you just have to make yourself available to that to happen mainly just do it just sit down and do it something will happen do you find that you have to be in a certain place to write? Do you prefer to get into the zone? Um, I like certain places, but it can be anywhere. Um, my motorcycle is really good. I have a sound system on my motorcycle, and when I play the jams from the day and I ride around LA, ideas come to me. Um, airplanes are good, trains are good, cars are good, beds are good. Um, the Hawaiian Islands have been good to me. It could happen anywhere. You yeah. just have to make yourself available. Uh, Vanessa from Brazil says, Anthony, which song took the most time to finish on the getaway and why? There were two that confounded me, that stumped me. If I was a contestant on Jeopardy, I would have come in last because I just couldn't get to the buzzer of figuring out two songs. One was called Dreams of a Samurai and the other was called We Turn Red. So I'd been given the music and fell in love with it, but just couldn't find my place in the song. Like I tried over and over and over. And Dreams of a Samurai comes in a very cockamamie time signature. It's not a typical rock time signature. And I, I couldn't even figure out the rhythm of where to sing. And, and then Brian, in his wisdom, asked Josh to play the piano chords of the song so I could hear something different that would maybe trigger some thoughts. And it did. And I finally saw the the riddle, the puzzle, the mystery of Dreams of a Samurai, but it took me six months. And then with We Turn Red, um, I loved the music. We wrote that with Brian in the studio. It seemed so funky and live and weird and, you know, kind of timeless in a way. Like it seemed old fashioned, but it seemed ultra modern at the same time. And I wanted to make my boys happy and proud and feel like, yeah, that's a, that's a rock and jam. But I couldn't, and I kept coming into the studio and singing Brian these parts, and he would look at me like, it's not great, it just doesn't really, can you try again? Would you go home and try again tomorrow? And I'd be like, I mean, it's my third time I've tried, but I'll try again. And on the last day of recording, I came in to try one final idea for We Turn Red, and we recorded it in a fell swoop, and I looked for his approval, and he's like, yeah, that's, that's better than the other ones. We'll, we'll keep that for now. And then a couple of days went by and he called me up and he said, that's actually pretty great. I think we'll put that on the record. Mm -hmm. So got it in the end. Got it in the end. <coughs> but that's just the way it happens. Same thing happened with uh, Can't Stop. That was a musical track that I hadn't sung on. And I, I literally said, can we go one extra day? I think maybe I have some words for that song. And in the very final 11th hour, you came to made it happen, yeah. Um, there's a question here about Josh. Josh is obviously your uh, guitar player. This is the second album. I think that's pretty obvious by now. Well then, uh, this is from uh, Ravinder Shura. What is it like working with Josh as a musician and also a friend? What does he like to work creatively with and how does he adapt to the lyrics? I am blown away by the few songs that you've uploaded so far. Josh has made an excellent contribution as a, mu as a musician and the music is taking to new heights. Ravinder Shura? Ravinder Shura. From where? 
Doesn't say. Doesn't say. It's a good name. Enigma. That's a good name. Um, well, Josh is wildly generous as a musical partner. He's super patient and giving, and I don't seem to have any sort of a, an ego conflict with Josh. Whatever he does, whatever I do, it's just supportive. Sometimes when you're working with musicians, they can be like, eh, you know, I, I could think of something better, but with Josh, it's just like, dude, I love that, let's go play. So he makes me very comfortable, he puts me at ease, and he's on a much higher level of um, musical understanding than I am. Like he plays piano and he plays drums and all instruments basically, and, and knows about musical theory and, and all these things. And I'm kind of the, the idiot in the band who ignores all that and just goes with my instinct. But he loves that and he honors that and he appreciates it as much as he would a classically trained musician. And he's constantly building my confidence by saying really sweet things. I could read you an email he wrote me yesterday that's just so loving and supportive. And uh, I think he l likes being in this band more today than he ever has in the last five years that he's been in the band. Like, he's just the happiest I've ever seen him. That's great. Yeah, and his contributions are abundant and beyond. That's what he likes to do. He doesn't really like to do much else other than go home and play guitar and piano and he's also a, a fascinating singer he's got this beautiful range and can make all kinds of great sounds with his voice so Ivan has actually asked um, who had the idea when you mentioned Olivia Wilde that you worked mm. with who had the idea to work with Olivia Wilde uh, what is the main vi uh, idea behind the video and who what? came up with it well Olivia presented herself so when we do a video, we kind of reach out to a bunch of directors and see if they're interested, and if we like them and they are, they'll write treatments, little ideas. And we read several for this song, and, and they were good, but they were a little complicated, and then we received hers, and it was very simple. And it was about the, the dark and bruised side of these beautiful athletes, these female skateboard athletes, and it was just, easy and clear and simple and we were attracted to the simplicity and on a, on a whim we just said let's go for it you know she has very little experience but the one video she made prior looked quite beautiful and then phone calls started pouring in saying I think it's a good idea if you do Olivia Wilde um, from other directors so they kind of had her back and it just seemed meant to be and we went for it. You're happy with the way it turned out? I like it a lot. I like her a lot. I like the video a lot. I'd, I'd work with her again. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Manda Linney says, Hi Anthony, I'm a lifelong fan. I literally love most of what you've released. My question to you is, when you first began in the 80s, did you ever see yourselves as a band staying around this relevant for so long? Uh, it's amazing that you guys have been able to reinvent yourselves over and over. Her real name is Manda Linney. Manda Linney. I feel like that's a made up name. Like a mandolin? Yeah, yeah, she might be having a song. If it's even a woman. You don't, you don't know of her over the internet. And we don't want you to don't No. Anyway, if it's your real name, it's quite beautiful. Um, yeah, in the 80s, we certainly weren't thinking about the 90s, the 2000s, or anything else. We were really just thinking about that day and maybe that night. Um, we started our band um, for free and for fun. Uh, it wasn't about money or, or anything else. It was just about a brotherhood of guys making noise together. And our first show was one song, and I don't think we received the dime for the performance, but it was strong and we felt it and we're like, this is good, let's do it again. And then, yeah, we, we weren't trying to stick around or be big or be small or be anything, we just wanted to play. And it took quite a long time for anyone to really care about what we were doing on a mass level. Um, club goers in Hollywood were strong and supportive of us um, for the first couple of years and then ever so slowly we started leaking into the consciousness of other states and other countries and and we've just been along for the ride um, it doesn't seem to be ending no yeah uh, talking of your uh, early songs uh, Kristen from San Jose in California must mm -hmm. have been watching Carpool Karaoke she asks whether Kimi Limi will ever be available for download for download, I think that song defies downloadability. We wrote that in the mountains of California up in Yosemite 
Flea and I on a little backpack trip when we were 16. So I think it's only meant to be heard by live ears. Okay, last question. Paulina asks, what overall message or feeling do you want the fans to take away from the new album? Well, um, we don't really dictate the message or the feeling. That's kind of up to the individual. Um, hopefully everybody gets something unique out of it, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's real, it's honest, it's, it's we love it and we hope that you get the love out of it. But take your own ride, not, not the one that we're telling you to take. You know, listen to it and see where it takes you and I'd love to hear about that. Thank you very much for answering our questions. Thank you. Job well done, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. And you too.